Hello, welcome to Hobby Farm Guys. I'm Steve. That fellow next to me, well that's Brian. Hello. And as usual, Farmer Eric is running things behind the camera. Howdy. Today, we're going to take a close-up look at chicken coop bedding. Now, we've sifted through dozens of scientific studies conducted on chicken bedding to determine which materials you should use and avoid. So stick around. Everything you never knew you needed to know about chicken bedding is coming up next. You're not going to want to miss it. And to make sure you don't miss any of our great chicken videos, click that notification bell once you subscribe to the channel. Let's do this. So about a year ago, we put together a video we call Chicken Roosts. Everything you never knew you needed to know. We'll put a link to that in the description. It's become one of our more popular videos. Now in it, we reviewed chicken roosts, but we didn't just rehash everything you see copied and pasted all over the internet. We sought out scientific studies and university research to determine what the science said. No offense, Facebook. After seeing the response, we began a similar search for scientific studies regarding chicken bedding and nesting materials. And after several months and a review of over 50 different studies, we have the results. Prepare to get a whole lot smarter. Now our goal was to figure out what the best options are for covering the floor of the coop. This coop flooring material catches and contains the waste produced by the chickens, it helps insulate the floor, provides material for scratching and pecking, and helps control odors. And it will contain spills from feeders and waters. Now we refer to this as litter. We found that most of the studies completed were conducted on bedding. Now bedding is a different than just litter in a couple of important ways. Bedding is basically chicken litter that chickens also bed in or live in full time. This makes sense uh, because that's how commercial chickens are raised using floor-based commercial production systems. And many of the studies that we looked at were looking at best practices and improvements for that industry. But as backyard chicken keepers, we use bedding slightly differently. Apart from broiler flocks, most of our chickens are not living full time in this bedding, but roosting at night and often roaming the yard during the day. So it doesn't make the studies useless, but it does change the way we need to look at the results. Yeah. So let's get to what we found. Spoiler alert, there's no perfect litter. But there are lots of options, from sand to gravel, straw to shredded paper, rice hulls, hemp, corn cobs, peanut hulls, and peat moss. From grass clippings, leaves, and about every variety of wood chip, shaving, and sawdust, hay, and pine needles, you have options. But most of those have significant drawbacks, and many are difficult to source in many areas. So to make things easier, we focused on the three most popular, most widely available options. Medium grain sand, wood shavings, and straw. Again. All of the options just mentioned can and are used as chicken litter. And if, for example, you have access to super cheap peanut hulls, you can overlook the fact that they aren't as absorbent and they often hold high amounts of mold and result in higher ammonia levels and use them. Just make sure you change them out frequently. So we based our research and findings on 10 properties that we believe are important to finding good litter. Four primary concerns that were weighted heavily and six secondary properties that were considered but not weighted as heavily. The four primary properties are moisture retention, ammonia levels, bacteria and mold harboring capacity, and dust levels. The six additional properties that we looked at were ease of use, cost, cleanliness, effectiveness as an insulator, compostability, and flammability. So let's start with moisture retention. There are two components to examine here absorption capacity, or how much water can be absorbed, and release rate, how quickly can that moisture be shed. Absorption is necessary to rid the coop of moisture quickly, and so the water doesn't pool. The quick release of water is necessary to keep the coop as dry as possible and limit pathogenic activity which thrives in damp environments. Straw is the most absorbent, with wood chips performing also well. Sand performs poorly for absorption, however it excels at shedding water. In one study, various forms of bedding were compared side by side. After 48 hours, sand retained only 22% moisture, pine shavings held almost 72%, and straw nearly 81%. In the end, what you want is for the coop to be as dry as possible. So sand is the winner 
because despite its low absorbency, sand tends to stay drier overall because it releases moisture so quickly. Straw is the worst, with pine shavings falling somewhere in the middle. Next up, ammonia. Ammonia is a nasty gas that, in high enough concentrations, is incredibly dangerous to your chickens. And turkeys are even more sensitive to its effect. High ammonia levels in the coop can result in chronic bronchitis, asthma, blindness, and death. Unfortunately, research on ammonia production by different bedding is, well, all over the place, right? Some show pine shavings with lower ammonia levels and speculate that there's chemicals in the wood that may be unfavorable uh, for the growth of ammonia-producing bacteria. Other studies, they show that wheat straw produces even lower levels. But other studies seem to indicate that that's due to the tendency of wheat straw to clump, right? And basically trapping ammonia beneath the crust until it's disturbed, probably by you as you clean out the coop. Uh, studies for sand are especially varied, with results from very low to higher than even wood shavings. Additionally, lab results in controlled conditions, they don't always mirror field studies. Due to wildly variable data, it's impossible to make certain conclusion, and as such, we're calling this property a three-way tie. Yeah. Now when it comes to bacteria and mold, an important consideration, and perhaps scary revelation, is that fresh bedding isn't sterile. A few studies looked at aerobic plate counts, which are indicators of bacterial populations. In these studies, pine shavings and straw started out with bacteria prior to ever even being added to the coop, with levels in straw almost double what they were in the shavings. After 16 weeks, they were measured again, and both had increased bacteria populations to about the same level, marking a modest increase in straw and a huge increase in the shavings. It appears the organic nature of wood and straw supports the growth of bacteria. Sand, on the other hand, does not support bacterial pathogens very well, and it's been found to have lower bacterial spore counts than organic beddings, including wood shavings and straw. Another study concluded that the lower bacteria levels in sand bedding may be due to sand's inorganic nature. Sand contains very few nutrients to support bacterial growth and may also lack the binding sites necessary for bacterial growth. Mold can also be prevalent in straw and can result in serious respiratory problems in livestock. One study found molds and endotoxins were significantly higher in straw than in wood shavings. Like bacteria, molds are often present in straw before it's even ever placed in the coop. And pine shavings have been shown to readily allow mold to grow and spread. Again, likely due to its inorganic nature, sand does not appear to support these pathogens. When it comes to bacteria and mold, sand is the clear winner, with the other options far behind, and wood shavings slightly outperforming straw. So we've talked about bacteria, mold, and toxins, and chickens are exposed to these hazards in two different ways. They ingest them, pecking through the litter, or they inhale dust from the litter containing the pathogens. As such, controlling dust becomes an important consideration. Multiple studies have compared dust generation of straw and wood shavings. The problem is they reach different conclusions. Some find straw dustier, others the shavings. It appears that the source of the product plays a role. Regardless, both produce considerable dust, with wood shaving dust being generally more dangerous than straw dust. We found very few studies that had been done on dust generation from sand in chicken coops with actual measurements, usually just a qualitative statement such as dusty or not dusty. It does appear that the finer the sand, the more dust is produced. There's mounting evidence that fine grain sand dust, especially those containing silica, can over time cause severe problems. Fine grain sand should be avoided, and the jury is still out on medium grain sands. While none of the options are without dust, based on the current data available, sand is the winner, followed by straw and pine shavings gets the bronze. So those are what we considered the top four priorities. We also looked at studies covering additional properties and we'll quickly sum up some of the high points. First, ease of use. Pine shavings, well, they're the easiest baking material to maneuver. Straw's gonna come in second with sand a solid third due to its weight. As for cost, well, that will likely vary depending upon your location and what's available to you. So I live in sand, so for me, that's free. But for most, straw is probably gonna be the cheapest followed by wood chips and then sand. For cleanliness, 
Straw is filthy due to, due to its propensity right to cake with poop into giant masses, resulting in a smelly coop. Sand is clean, and wood shavings, they fall in the middle. As for insulator properties, sand has been found to keep poultry houses cooler. And while that's great in the summer, it's not so great in the winter. And since we live where it's winter the bulk of the year, sand loses. But if you live where it's hot, you'll appreciate sand. Being organic, both straw and pine shavings can release heat during decomposition. So if you employ a deep litter method, your coop will be warmer in both summer and winter. Anyone who has had chickens for a long time realizes that they produce a seemingly endless supply of litter. As such, being able to compost it and use it in the garden or sell it is a plus. Wood chips are easiest, followed by straw. Tough to compost sand though. And finally, flammability. While we don't recommend a heat source in the coop, many people do choose to use that option. And even if you don't use a heat source, other fire hazards do exist, especially if you have power in your coop. Pine shavings are incredibly flammable, and they're the big loser here. Straw, while flammable, is not nearly as bad as the wood shavings, and sand, basically being a rock, isn't flammable at all. So given the scientific studies we reviewed, and weighing properties of each litter material based upon our perceived importance, medium grit sand takes the gold, and straw, well, it edges pine shavings for the silver, leaving pine shavings as a bronze medal winner. Again, each situation is unique, and you'll want to choose a solution that works best for you. But hopefully, in sharing the results of these scientific studies, we've made you a smarter and more savvy chicken litter material determiner. <laughs> so choose wisely. Another good choice, subscribing to our channel. Videos like this, well, they take a lot of time and effort to compile and publish. You can let us know it's worth it by hitting that like button for us and then clicking subscribe. That way, you can always find us when you have more questions. In fact, you can leave those questions of your own right down in the comment section. We read them all, and often, we grant the wishes of our awesome subscribers. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, happy hobby farming, everybody. See ya.